Well, I was just pointing to, it used to be Wimpy Burgers down there. Uh, and seriously, the best burgers in town. I mean, they were big and lots of heavy cheese, <laughs> onions, man. I mean, that's where y'all, that's where we went. We wanted to be fed well. Well, I've, I've driven down Prospect before and I look at all the, the closed uh, fish fry places and I'm like, man, what, I gotta go to Luffy's, where, where else do I wanna go for good, look at all these places that used to exist for, for great fish. Well, see, and that's what, that's what people in the neighborhood did. You know, I mean, churches had fish fries on Friday night. And people who, I mean, that's where entrepreneurs came from. If you were a black entrepreneur and you knew how to cook, you could do something. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, that seemed to be about the limits of it in, mm -hmm. in a lot of instances. It was hard to get a business because people weren't loaning money. Okay, right. uh, redlining uh, was certainly in vogue. There still isn't banking on the east side of town. Yeah. So there's lots of dividing lines in our in our city. Yeah. Lots of dividing lines. Yes. We got divide divides between the the core and the suburbs. We have the the, the truce, uh red line. Yes. Um, we have all all these sorts of divides, and they're not necessarily <laughs> entirely tied in with with race, but a lot of it's economics. Yes. A lot of it's economics. Tons of economic issues. I mean. When you start to think about the different economic schemes and how they affect uh, minority areas, poverty areas, it's pretty interesting to know, it's pretty easy to see why those areas stay in the conditions they are. Banking, you know, you can't drive down the street in the fourth district without running into three, four banks every six or seven blocks. You won't see a bank over here. People in this area do business in cash. A uh, lot of people don't have checking accounts. Um, you know, direct deposit, they only do that if they have to because of whatever job they have. But banking industry d has not really worked in this area. Payday loans are pro proliferate because people need uh, to be able to borrow and, uh, and solve problems like that, but they can't do it with banks. If you can't, uh, get a business loan, then it's hard to maybe start a business. Mm -hmm. So it continues the same cycle of the poor remaining poor, minority areas remaining the same, because there's no economic empowerment that they have in order to change that. Um, businesses do not come here. They're not comfortable. Uh, they, they think that there's crime all over the place. They argue that there aren't enough rooftops, that there's not enough expendable mm. income, which is really silly because people here are still buying refrigerators. Mm -hmm. They're still buying groceries, but they have to travel a long distance in right. order to get them. Somebody said yesterday at one of the meetings I attended, why should a grocer bother to build a new grocery store on the east of Troost or in the, on the east side of town when they know that the people on the east side of town have no choice except to go to wherever their grocers are anyhow. So why do it? There's one uh, well-known grocer, Leon's Thriftway down at 39th and Jackson, and the idea was every African American should go there and buy all their food there and then it would certainly get the notice because if you take the African American dollar out of circulation in certain areas of this city after a while, people would really start to feel it. Yeah. But we don't do that. So we're not generating economic activity that has a true impact on minority and poor communities. Uh, the economic activity that is generated does not have a direct impact on the people who are generating it. It affects the people uh, hmm. who have those businesses elsewhere. And that's a problem. And it's something that's really starting to be under the burr of uh, the communities east of town.